Now that The Simpsons has been going for more than 30 seasons, with hundreds of episodes to its name, there are numerous truly terrible installments of the series. At this point, there's dozens, if not hundreds of them. But whenever people discuss the worst ever episode of the show, there's one installment that always gets mentioned. The second episode of the ninth season, The Principal and the Pauper, which first aired in September 1997. In the episode, secondary character Seymour Skinner is celebrating his 20th anniversary as the principal of the Springfield Elementary School when a stranger interrupts, accusing Skinner of being an imposter, specifically that he had stolen the stranger's identity. Skinner admits that his real name is Armin Tamsarian, and that he had thought that the real Seymour Skinner, who was a friend from the army, had died in the Vietnam War. After the revelation, Tamsarian leaves Springfield, but he's later persuaded to return as principal. The episode immediately sparked controversy amongst hardcore fans of the series for a number of reasons, most notably that it was the moment that The Simpsons ostensibly jumped the shark because it was no longer the same show that it had always been, with the sudden and completely unnecessary alteration to a fan favorite character's backstory. You've been my son longer than he has, and he doesn't need me, and I don't need him. The over-the-top, unnecessarily convoluted story also suggested that the series was running out of ideas for the show and that they were getting desperate. Additionally, there was another little mentioned controversy in relation to the episode, Skinner's real name. My real name is Armin Tamzarian. <gasps> because, like Skinner, the author of the episode, Ken Keeler, made the fateful decision to just steal one. Yoink! Yoink! Ken Keeler has written for a number of TV series, most of which have been animated, such as The Critic, about the misadventures and frustrations of a cynical film reviewer. It stinks. And The PJs, which follows the lives of the occupants of an inner city housing project, though Keeler is best known for his work with Matt Groening. Keeler's most notable achievements have been with Groening's second show, Futurama, as Keeler has not only been one of the most prolific writers for the series, but he's also written some of the most important episodes, including three of the show's potential finales, The Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings, Into the Wild Green Yonder, and Meanwhile. Keeler's work on The Simpsons is also just as notable as his contributions to the Futurama universe, though not for the same reasons. Most of his work for The Simpsons has been controversial. Some was polarizing, but still received critical acclaim, such as the ninth episode of the eighth season, The Mysterious Voyage of Homer, when Homer goes on a spiritual journey after eating chili. The episode was praised for its experimentation, as it was one of the first times the show had really stepped out of its comfort zone and experimented with the philosophical narrative and surreal aesthetic. In contrast, other episodes of Keeler's were controversial and widely criticized, such as the 18th episode of the sixth season, A Star is Burns, when Springfield decides to hold a film festival. Ultimately, it's a solid installment, complete with an engaging story, classic jokes, and iconic moments, as you'd expect from a golden era episode. I was saying balloons. But the installment was also the show's first ever crossover, which they did with The Critic, so many fans saw it as a lazy attempt to promote another series that was loosely associated with The Simpsons. But no episode of Keeler's was more controversial than Principal and the Pauper, due to a variety of creative decisions made during the course of the episode's production. But I'm a hero! And we salute you for it. Now don't come back! Prior to pursuing a career in the television industry, Keeler achieved a master's degree in electrical engineering at Stanford before earning a PhD in applied mathematics from Harvard in 1990. His first job out of college was for the performance analysis department at AT&T Bell Laboratories, now known as Nokia Bell Labs, an industrial research and scientific development company with multiple Nobel Prizes to its name. Despite his credentials and his promising career in science, Keeler ended up pursuing a career as a writer when he got the opportunity to join the writing room of the show Late Night with David Letterman in 1991. The following year, Keeler joined the writing staff of the sketch comedy series The Edge. The series ran from September 1992 to May 1993, consisting of 20 episodes in a single season. Nowadays, if the show's remembered at all, it's because it was one of Jennifer Aniston's early roles in television. But the show played an important and unusual role in the history of The Simpsons. The Edge was created by David Merck and who, following the cancellation of the show, joined The Simpsons as a series showrunner for the fifth and sixth season from 1993 to 1995. Also, shortly after moving to Los Angeles in order to work for The Edge, Killer was involved in a car accident. As a result, he ended up meeting a claims adjuster with a distinct name, Armin Tamzarian.
the real Tamzarian was completely unaware the killer had unceremoniously inducted him, or at least his name, into the Simpsons universe until after The Principal and the Pauper aired in September 1997. It was almost certainly a surreal and alarming moment for Tamzarian, which would have been made even weirder due to the intensely negative response to the episode. What did, what did look at you? Oh my god. In addition to the backlash to the installment, with all the hardcore Simpsons fans cursing his name, Tamzarian was confused and concerned about the use of his name in the episode, as he had a reputation to think about, because by the time the installment aired, Tamzarian had made significant advances in his career, and had good reason to be alarmed at the depiction of someone named Armin Tamzarian as a liar and a criminal. Given that, when the episode aired, the real Tamzarian was now a lawyer. Prior to meeting Keeler, Tamzarian had received a BBA from the University of Massachusetts before earning his JD from Southwestern Law School. After his faithful though seemingly insignificant interaction with Keeler, Tamzarian quickly advanced in his legal career, serving as a research attorney for the Los Angeles County Superior Court in 1996. The following year, he joined the law firm Case, Nelson, Jordan and Wright as an associate, and it was around this time that Principal and the Pauper aired. In response to the installment, Tamzarian sent Keeler a curtly worded letter questioning why his name had been used in the episode, concerned that it was a strange, very public criticism of his credibility. Understandably, after discovering that Tamzarian was now a lawyer, Keeler feared that he may be in legal trouble, given that all he had done to separate the Tamzarian in the episode and the real life one was change the spelling of his first name, using an I instead of an E, which was hardly going to serve as a solid defense in any potential defamation case. I move for a bad court thingy. Despite Keeler's concerns though, after further correspondence, Tamzarian assured Keeler that he wasn't upset and that he had just been curious as to why Keeler made the decision to use his name. Basically, as Keeler explained, he just liked the sound of it because it was distinct and memorable. Obviously, Keeler never intended for the character of Tamzarian to reflect at all, let alone badly on the real Tamzarian. But given the real Tamzarian's highly successful career, there has inevitably been ripple effects, especially because, following Principal and the Pauper, Tamzarian continued to make significant advances in his career. After five years with Case, Nelson, Jordan, and Wright, he was named a partner in 2002, specializing in business and real estate litigation. In 2008, he became a senior appellate attorney for the Second District Court of Appeal in California, where he remained until December 2013, when he was appointed to the Los Angeles County Superior Court. As a result of his successful legal career, combined with the controversy of Principal and the Pauper, there have been numerous instances of Simpsons fans showing up to court only to think that they were being pranked when they saw the name of the judge presiding over their case. And for hardcore Simpsons fans, it must be even stranger when they really think about it. After the backlash to Principal and the Pauper, the Simpsons officially declared the episode non-canon. However, had they not made that decision, it would make for a highly unusual case of life-reflecting art. In the sixth episode of the fourth season, Itchy and Scratchy the Movie, which first aired in November 1992, Homer forbids Bart from seeing the new Itchy and Scratchy movie. One for Itchy and Scratchy? Uh, we promised your dad we wouldn't. And as a result of Homer enforcing his strict punishment, Bart ends up becoming the Chief Justice of the United States. Which means that Bart became a judge after having a principal named Armin Tamzarian, who was based on a real life person, who would also go on and become a high profile judge. Yoink!